Hey everyone, Fuzz here. Today I'll be sharing with you the tale of the sweet little Minotaur girl, and the lessons she learned of hope. Enjoy! Be a young Minotaur girl, living with my tribe on our island. Papa is the tribe chief, which means he's the biggest and toughest Minotaur ever! I tell Papa that one day I'll be stronger than him, but he just laughs. It is good you wish to be strong, little one. But if so, it is better to have a strong heart than a strong arm. That is wisdom your mama shared with me, and she would tell you the same if she were here. Papa gets all quiet like he usually does when he remembers mama. I ask him if I've grown enough to go on the fishing boats with him when he snaps out of it. He promises that before the summer ends, I will sail on the great sea with him. A week later, strange boats land on our shores. Papa gets that far away look in his eye again. The humans have found us. The tribe is asking Papa if they should fight, but he tells them no. Hundreds of humans covered in metal march into our village. The shiniest human goes up to Papa and demands him to kneel. One of the tribeswomen takes me aside to try to keep me away from what is happening. After a while, some humans come over and drag me away from the others. The shiny human holds me by the arm so tightly it hurts. If all is settled, we'll be taking your daughter to the capital to assure your good behavior. So long as you and your bestial ilk serve the legion well, you will earn the emperor's mercy. They are going to take me away? I can see tears in my papa's eyes as he looks down at me. I am sorry, little one. You'll have your chance to sail on a ship but Papa will not be able to go with you, this time. He blinks away his tears, stands up to his full height, and places a hand upon his breast. He doesn't speak a word, but I know what he wants to tell me. I must keep a strong heart. The humans take me away to the boats and lock me in a tiny room for the trip. There is no window, so during my first week of sailing, I never even get to see the ocean. Weeks later, I arrive at the capital, where there are more people and buildings than I ever imagined the world could hold. The whole of our island could fit in this one city, and I start to realize why Papa didn't want to fight. I'm brought before two humans in robes, who start talking about what to do with me. I say we set her to work in one of the temples. She's perhaps young enough to pick up a little civilization. Ah, uh, here we go again with your rehabilitation nonsense. You can't just put a monster in a toga and pretend it will suddenly become sapient. Nothing like that. I just think that when she returns to her tribe after living in civilization, she might better convince them to give up their barbarism. Ha! If she returns, we'll send her to the temple, but only because seeing these fiend spawns subjugated and laboring in the presence of the gods makes quite the compelling sight for the masses. In that case, we should give her a proper name. Can't have mongrel speech in the holy sites. How does Nicoletta sound? A bit ironic to name a hostage victory, don't you think? I like to think it serves as a reminder of what her father must give us to see her safe. Ha. <laughs> Maybe you're not such a bleeding heart after all. Years later, I am cleaning the altar within the Temple of Apollo, as I have to do after every sacrifice. It's a festival, so today I have the pleasure of cleaning up the disemboweled corpse of a white calf. The priests have a whole sermon as to why it's proper to make a minotaur perform this duty, but I'm sure they just find it funny. Apollo may be the god of music and light, but Sunny is the last word I would use to describe their demeanor. The worst part are the initiatives who never miss an opportunity to heckle me as I pass. Oh, what a tragedy. It's always a shame to see a maiden bury her lover, and when the marriage was so close at hand, too. Come, brothers, let us pray for our beloved cow in this trying time. <laughs> Jerks. I don't even have the spare breath to curse them while lugging 200 pounds of meat to the pyre. I'm always the one selected for the heavy labors even though I'm barely any taller or stronger than a human. When I was first brought to the temple, 
My mules weren't much more than a ball of grass straight from the field either. I'd try to tell the priests about the fishing boats on my island, but they would just call me a liar. I can't believe your people ate meat. Who ever heard of a cow eating fish of all things? Cattle grow just fine on a diet of grass and you'll do the same. You are here to be tamed after all. Apparently the priest thought that feeding me meat might reawaken my hunger for human flesh. Thankfully the slaves were willing to slip me some of their bread and porridge so I didn't starve. I might be a hostage, but I may as well be a slave as far as it matters. Goblins, orcs, dwarves, even an elf or labor to keep the Temple of Apollo in splendid shape for the humans. Once a season, a priest takes me aside to send a letter to Papa. It's the only reason I know he's still alive as he fights for the Empire somewhere out there. I'm only to add a few names or minotaur words, just to make the letter sound at least a tiny bit authentic. I'm sure there's nothing but lies on those scrolls, but I've never asked to see them. Doing so might tip the priests off that I've learned how to read. Every day before dawn, I watch the 50-foot statue of Apollo, and I see the inscription at its base. You who sing to Apollo with all your heart, he will honor. As the sun rises, I am sent away, as the priests begin their rituals, so that my presence will not displease Apollo. After all, only humans are born with souls, crafted by the gods in their own image to be the masters of all. I desperately wish I was human. I once tried to saw off my horns, but halfway through the pain was too great and I started crying. The priests heard the noise, and when they discovered what I was doing, they had me beaten as punishment. They used their holy magic to repair my horn, but let me keep the bruises. But there are other ways to rebel. Underneath the temple I sit in the darkness of the slave quarters, straining to hear the music above. And should I be lucky to catch any scrap of melody, I hum it to myself, and then I try to find the notes on my beat up lyre. I had found it thrown out in the trash, probably by one of the initiates after the strings broke, and he was too lazy to repair it. I can barely play a few notes, and my large fingers don't help, but it's my one treasure. The slaves humor me. They sit around telling stories of their own lost homes as I play for them. We sing together in the dark, mourning lost family, and our stolen lands. Above, the humans praise the gods for protecting them from the evils of the world. One morning, I rise from my duties early, so my chores may be done before sunrise. I have prayed to Apollo before, though I don't know any of the songs or words that he favors. But always, it was done in secret, in the shadows. Just once I wanted to beseech him in the light with his sight upon me. I read the inscription one last time, and hoped that I would have the strength of heart my papa wished of me. I bring out my lyre and whisper my own hymns to a god I fear hates me. I pray that the fur will fall from my body and my hooves will soften. I pray that my horns will shed and my tail disappear. I pray that I will be made human. And in gratitude, I will spend every day and night singing for Apollo until my heart bursts. I pray that Papa will be kept safe, as he risked his life in battle, for a people that hate him. I pray the Mama still watches over me, and is not ashamed of what has become of us. I pray that if the gods have no love for a monster, that they might at least have pity. When I am finished, the first rays of sunlight are peeking over the horizon. In my hands I see the lyre glow and I feel its warmth as a tiny flame has been placed in my hands. The glow fades. Then suddenly, I find an arm caught in a tight grip from behind. I turn to find myself face to face with the high priest, his eyes wide with shock. He calls for the guards, and before long, I am carried away. From my dungeon cell, I can hear the priests arguing in the other room. Execution! That's the only course of action. Charge it with heresy or witchcraft. Do we even need to cite a reason to have her put down? It's not like she's a citizen. She is a hostage, right? We might need to check with the Legion. 
No need. Her father is just some captain in the monstrous auxiliaries. Nothing worth considering. The important thing is that this must be dealt with swiftly. The waning of our power lately is of grave concern, but we've managed to keep news of it suppressed. Right. If the people heard not only that, but also that a monster is being granted divine spells, well, there would be a lot of questions about where exactly the will of the gods lie. Then it is settled. Tomorrow she shall be slain. Let her be a sacrifice upon Apollo's very altar that she has dared to profane. Perhaps then he will again smile upon his faithful chosen. As they all murmur their agreement, I slowly walk over to the tiny barred window of my cell. They were not gentle in their questioning, and it hurts to move too much. But I just want to watch what will now be my last sunset and offer one last prayer for Apollo. I tell him that I don't hate him, even as his followers plan my murder. In that brief moment, when he let a sliver of his power fall upon me, I felt his warmth and love. I felt a lightness in my heart that I had missed since the day they took me away from Papa. As the sun dips low on the horizon, I swear it seems that it only seems to get brighter, almost as if the sun itself is coming closer, reaching out to me. And when the guards arrive to check my cell the next morning, they find it empty. I sit by a campfire in a snowy forest, strange companions all around me. They say they are a group of veteran adventurers, cell swords who travel to where the greatest treasures can be won, or the greatest good can be done. They found me passed out in the middle of the ice, and they nursed my wounds. All evening I've shared with them my tale, and I found that I've somehow wound up in the snowlands beyond the Empire's northern borders. Their leader is a dragonborn named Daisy, a warrior who reminds me of my papa, with a great strength but gentle demeanor. She asks me to concentrate to see if I can bring forth the magic Apollo bestowed upon me. My lyre was taken from me by the guards, but somehow was back with me when I arrived here. So I held it in my hands. I strummed as I sung one of my little hymns I had composed back beneath the temple. Before my eyes, the lyre starts to glow with a golden light, and that feeling of warmth comes back into my breast. Daisy smiles at me, more amused than awed by the display. Quiet, it's a cantrip, the lowest level of magic. Not much of a boon for a god to grant, unfortunately. I shake my head at her, tears streaming in my eyes even as I smile wide with excitement. You're wrong. It's the greatest of miracles. It's a message from the gods themselves. I stand up and shout my words into the night sky, as if the wind could carry them all the way to the Empire. I have a soul. I am not a monster. Taisy comes forward and embraces me. You're right, my fair cow maiden. You're here with us now because your god has a purpose for you. You're not a monster. You're going to be a hero. B. Nicoletta Strongheart, Level 1 Minotaur Cleric of Apollo. Wasn't that a cute story? I hope you all enjoyed it. I was trying to do more voices for this one. Let me know if you think it was for better or worse. With this channel being so new, a single like or subscriber goes a long way, so please click a button or two and help us out. You can also join our communities in the description below, or help us out directly with Patreon so we can produce more content. Thanks for watching, and have a good one.